Hi, hello Drag Race fans and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jer and I have been doing a roundup of my top 10 favorite looks for each Drag Race season. And this week I posted a video talking about why you should watch Drag Race Thailand because it is a banger of a season. I'm such a huge fan. I think I'm going to watch it at least two more times because it is just that spectacular. So I wanted to go through and talk about all my favorite looks from season two of Thailand. I'm so excited for season three whenever that ends up airing and I am 100% going to be reviewing those episodes here on YouTube every single week when those drop. But for now, to stave us, let's talk about my top 10. Now, as with every single one of these reviews, these are my own personal opinion on what I responded to the most from the season, things that I remembered the most, things that I enjoyed. So those are my parameters. There are some looks that I really wanted to include in this list, but just ended up getting cut because 10 is very small when you have, you know, 12 contestants and 12 episodes. There are going to be a lot of looks that are going to get thrown to the wayside because they just can't possibly all fit in here. So don't get mad if your favorite one was not in here, but hopefully one of your favorite looks is here. So without further ado, let's jump in. And I got all these photos from the Drag Race Wiki, which you can find in the description link. Let's start with my number 10, which belongs to Anjali Anung in her finale performance. Now, this is such a simple look. And to be honest, this is really not the most spectacular look. You know, when you look at it from just a visual standpoint, it is a plain white dress with some Velcro on it to rip off. And underneath was a plain bodysuit. It's really not spectacular. But what I responded to with this particular look was the performance. And all of the heart that went into it if you have not seen this finale performance, it brought tears to my eyes. And that's why this look ends up being propelled into top 10, because it's memorable, because of what its impact was. Being this person who is struggling with their inner demons and fights them and comes out on top and becomes a champion through all of it, this was a really beautiful performance number. And the look corresponds so well going out and being bald for your finale performance that everyone is going to have their very last impression of you in, it takes some guts. And I think Anjali was so powerful and strong in this number and she's just radiating that essence of power and beauty. And that's why this look was in the number 10 slot. In the number nine position is Vanda Miss Joachim for the silver, gold, and Thai looks. I will be completely honest, I am a huge stan of Vanda. I really enjoy basically everything she did, and she's got one of my favorite runway packages, probably of any franchise of all time, and I think Vanda needs to come back immediately for a global all-stars or some type of versus the world scenario. If anybody's going to represent Thailand, it should be Vanda, and I hope that she appears in something soon because we need her. I really love everything about this look. I love all the exaggerated shapes and you still get that super sleek type dress. It's form fitting and her upper body and her arms, but then these really big bow moments. There's something almost Egyptian looking about it all. It, there's so many great elements to this. It represents her so well. It represents the theme so well, and she looks powerful and strong, and Vanda's tiny. And I think one thing that I really respond to are queens that have small, regular, out-of-drag proportions and manage to make themselves look really massive and presentational and don't shy away from being big. Because I think a lot of smaller queens would sort of have the inclination that they're going to scale everything down but these small queens like Vanda, you see it so well with people like Marina, who just manage to make themselves look so big and they have all this presence when they're on stage. I respond really well to that. 
And that's why this reaches number nine. Moving into the number eight slot is Bandit's white elephant look. Now, a lot of what, what happened on this runway was so stunning. This was a hard category to pick just one from because to be honest, all of them had great looks. Every single one of them, with the exception of Anjali. Hers was a little bit clunky, in my opinion. It was a bit of an anvil drop, but everybody had such good looks this particular runway. And what I appreciate about what Bandit did in this particular look is that it, it retains the elephant silhouette. It retains the iconography. It retains looking like what the presentation is supposed to be. It fits the box. But somehow it becomes glamorous and it does not go into a camp, silly, goofy place. It stays in high fashion and couture. You've got this really beautiful silhouette with the shoulder cutout that I really respond to. I love how sleek the dress is with this cage corset with all the beading and diamonds and sparkle. My only critique is that the actual lower half needs to probably be pressed maybe one more time or steamed, and it could have maybe used a little more sparkle down there, but I really respond to all the beading work that's on the bodice, this necklace, the sharp eye makeup, how structural the headpiece is, and you can totally 100% tell what this prompt is supposed to be, and I always respond well to looks like that. Now moving into the number seven slot is Vanda Miss Joe King's runway again for the Pumpong runway. And I know that I butchered the name and I'm so sorry. Vanda did what I really love to see, which is to take a look and add body, body, body to it. And this is not a really good photo. This came from the wiki and there are better angles that they probably could have used for this photo. So I am bummed that this is not the best representation of what this look was. Vanda looked so snatched. Her waist was tiny. Her hips and her breasts were massive because of the silhouette of this dress. There was something almost concerty about it. And this particular performer that they are riffing off of was an entertainer and singer. And you can tell that this was some type of stage costume. It looked incredible on her. I love the animal print, the really big teased hair, and her makeup was so elegant and glamorous. Really love this look. And I, I think the thing that I respond to the most are the proportions. And I wish you could see it better because this look was it. It was my favorite look that night. Right next to what Srimala did, but they did not like Srimala's look at all. And that was quite disappointing because I'm a big Srimala stan. Moving into the number six slot is Vanda Miss Joachim's Miss Star of the Galaxy look. So the prompt for this was that they had to come out and do basically a pageant. But imagine what that pageant would look like in space, in the future, in a big galaxy pageant. And I really love this almost Queen Amidala-esque look. She looks like a golden globe in the future. I really love the little headpiece that she's got going on with this really beautiful structural hair that's serving pageantry at its finest. Normally, these types of paillettes are really ugly. These are, are sort of square looking and they catch the light in weird ways, and they can look cheap. And I think because of the prompt, the way that she styled herself, the way that the dress is cut and lined, and the way that it fits her with the different accessories that she has put on it, like with the fingers, I think it takes it out of cheap, tacky costumey into luxe pageantry. And I think that she was the best one of the night. She delivered a really incredible speech during her presentation portion. And I cannot say enough good things about Vanda. I really do think that she was the most polished and put together this season. And I feel like the judges sometimes got it. And then other nights they didn't. This was thankfully a night where they did get it. And she just looks beautiful. 
Moving into the number five slot is Miss Gim Hui's Hollywood in Your Heart runway. Now, this is a controversial take because this unfortunately is the look that disqualified Miss Gim Hui the following week. So, unfortunately, she did end up going home because she took this particular piece back to the hotel and worked on it there. But this was one of the coolest looks, seeing it come down the runway with the fire elements coming out, this really mechanical ghost rider with this insane makeup, the helmet with all the spikes, the, this really cool motorcycle scooter that she's created with this massive silhouette. When, when this look came out, I truly thought, okay, Miss Kim Hui is about to win the whole thing. Like, she is winning the show. This was the look that is going to cement her in top three. And she's going to win. And then she got DQ'd. And I was gagaroni and cheese. I still am really gagged that she went home. And I respect the judge's decision to still do the DQ, even though she was so good all season. I, what I love the most about this is the makeup. And I think... The presentation of this motorcycle scooter is so cool. You get what it's supposed to be looking at it. And I'm obsessed with this look. I think it's one of the best looks of the season, purely based on iconography. Maybe not necessarily because of execution, even though it is executed very well, but certainly the iconography of what this look is. And how many times do you see this type of skull makeup on the runway? Almost never. I can't think of anyone who's done anything like this to this level and executed it so well. Next in the number four slot is Candy Zionite's promo look. Putting a promo look might seem unfair, but this look lives rent-free in my brain. I really love lace with a matte fabric below it. And what Candy has here is this beautiful gold nude lace on with all of this beautiful accessorization. I really enjoy this sort of 1920s to 1940s entertainment girl vibe that this has. The hair is beautiful and I wish more drag queens would wear hair like this. The waist is snatched for the ages. I'm obsessed with this skirt and how it billows out into the mermaid trails behind her she looks so damn good it's almost sinful how good candy looks here and we got to talk about the makeup and the lip because she just looks nummy and then all these gold elements that are coming off of it she looks so good i really love this look it's one of my favorite promos but not as much as my number three which belongs to vanda miss Joakim. Vanda's kind of dominating this top 10, and again, I really believe that Vanda had one of the best runway packages, and it started from her promotion look. Starting at the top with this blue crown that has all these gold elements coming off of it into this beautiful sort of 1950s housewife hair that looks very heading off to take care of the troops and gonna go perform for them, give them a good time. I really love the exaggerated sleeve moment. And one big thing about Vanda's drag is that she doesn't show body. Vanda talked about on the show how she's got really bad eczema and how she does not like to show her body because she's self-conscious about it. And I honestly didn't even notice until she said it, how many of her looks are her fully covered up. Even when she shows quote unquote body, She's in tons of layers of tights. She's in nude bodysuits underneath so that you can't even see. And I don't know how you manage to be as tiny as she is and still not look like you're being swallowed up by a garment. It is so easy to have a high neck dress like this that goes all the way to the floor, billows out into this sort of squid-like pattern on the legs and have your entire body covered with a nude mesh on the arms that's not even nude that is that's not even her arms that is a nude mesh with sparkles all over it and not look like you are being devoured that is a skill and a talent and a ferocity that not a lot of queens have i really love this cobalt blue with these gold elements to it she looks like she is water that you pan for gold in but you get real gold oh god she looks so good 
Next in the number two slot is Genie's Rainbow After the Rain look. This was a really stunning look that's hard to capture in a photo. It looked better in motion. Genie came out in this garment that sparkled and lit up and changed colors as she walked down the runway. So she looked like a rainbow cloud. And it's so fun to think, what would a Quincy looking gay cloud look like? Floating through the sky, changing colors into rainbow and being a sickening cloud. And she did that. The makeup is really beautiful. And in this moment, I also thought that Jeannie was gonna make it to top three. I truly thought in my heart that it was gonna be Kim Hui, Jeannie and Vanda at the top three. And that's, that is just how it was gonna go. And the cookie crumbled very differently, unfortunately, because they eliminated way too many people way too fast that Jeannie just could not slide through the lip sync that she got eliminated in, which was disappointing and upsetting. But I really think that this was one of the strongest looks in the entire season based on what it was. And I still, to this day, cannot figure out what this material was because part of it kind of looks like tulle, but then another part of it looks like it was legitimately made from those little puff packs that you buy. But it doesn't look like that because it's constructed in a way that looks like it's all one big piece. You can't see the individual parts that might be glued to hold it together. This is an immaculate look. And finally, in the number one slot, belongs to Miss Star of the Galaxy, Srimala, who did lip sync that week. The judges slept on this outfit. The judges slept on her presentation, her stiffness and roboticness and weird plastered smile and her strange singing were so perfect and camp and Srimala won this week right next to Vanda for me. I freaking loved everything that Srimala did. When she came out in that promo and I saw that plastered on face that was just crazy eyes, crazy lips, huge, gigantic hair and weird proportions. I thought this girl is a first out. Every week that she came out being weird and silly and goofy, I fell in love with her more and more and more. And to come out as a Miss Star of the Galaxy in this crazy cream pageant dress with all of these ruffles at the bottom and then this disco ball sized hair, that they forced her to lip sync in that had all of these huge elements in it. She's so tiny and small and balanced, literally a globe on top of her head. And she looks stunning. I am such a Srimala stan. I love everything that she did, even when it was a miss and even when it was a flop. I loved Srimala week after week after week and I wanted her to stay and be top four and maybe in some reality get propelled to the end but that's not what happened and it makes me sad because i love srimala so 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 much and i love this look i will not back down this was my favorite look and i don't even care that she lip synced that weekend almost went home srimala was the moment she was and that's all there is to say about that and with that that has been my top 10 looks of drag race thailand season two Tell me what your favorite looks were this season. Who had one of your favorite eye-catching moments? And whenever season three happens, trust and believe, I will be making sure to review that. Please check out some of my other Drag Race playlists. I would super appreciate and love that. And if you like gaming, you should check out some of those playlists as well. But be sure to subscribe so you can see even more. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you on the flip. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to click that like button. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe. Goodbye.